Hi everyone, uh, I'm uh, and I'll be presenting the min and max aggregations uh, with updates uh, uh, in the real-time ingestion system. Um, uh, can I see the slides? Okay, great. So yeah, uh, moving on. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, my name is Minakshi and I'm a staff software engineer in the data platform org uh, in the enterprise insights at Twilio. Uh, what we do there is uh, for our customers, we, ha uh, do, we have a real-time analytics pipeline and uh, uh, we handle uh, 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 data ingestion, uh, do the real-time analytics and provide dashboards and APIs for our customers to query. Uh, so looking at the today's agenda, uh, I'll go through the real-time analytics architecture um, of our team, uh, uh, giving a little bit background of um, how to set up the data set fact and cube uh, in OLAP and uh, and then moving on to the details of how we do the min-max calculation with updates. Uh, so this is our uh, uh, architecture. Uh, on the top part, you can see the uh, real-time ingestion pipeline. The bottom part shows the batch pipeline. And uh, as the database to store or the data, we use Apache Kudu. And uh, we have a read pipeline where we provide APIs to query that data. So uh, we'll be focusing on the real-time ingestion pipeline because I'll be focusing on the min-max aggregations during real-time ingestion. Um, so uh, during that phase, so if you can see, uh, the green circles represent the Kafka topics uh, where we get raw events from our customers. And those raw events, we send it to a real-time mapper, which is a transformation, which does simple transformations. Um, it's a Kafka Streams app, and it does transformations like uh, converting uh, an event into an object format or cleaning up the data. And uh, again, uh, uh, after the transformation is done, it writes to a changelog topic. The, the, the events from the changelog topic are then uh, uh, processed by a Kafka Sync connector, that is the data Kudu consumer uh, or Kafka Connect app, uh, and then uh, basically the raw events are written in a tabular format in our database or uh, the fact uh, uh, in the fact format. And then uh, you can see the real time indexer that is our Cuber app. That is another Kafka streams app, which does the actual work. That is the aggregation. Um, it also handles du uh, deduplication. So it handles duplicates and then it does aggregation. So we support uh, some count, min, and max aggregations. And then again, the the uh, Connect app, the Kafka Connect app, that is the data Kudu consumer, handles the, uh, using a sync connector, handles these aggregated records and writes them to uh, the uh, uh, Kudu. Uh, uh, looking at the read pipeline, we use um, Apache CalSight for uh, optimization of the queries and then provide them via API and our dashboard. Um, uh, and then uh, the batch pipeline is just used to handle updates which are more than three days old and also do some cleanup. Like when accounts are deleted, we delete uh, the data in our database. Uh, moving on. Uh, so we'll be looking at the data set fact and queue um, for uh, setting up some background. So looking at the data set, you can think of a data set as like a metadata of the data. Uh, for example, you determine, uh, you uh, say what is the incoming topic which uh, you will be reading. Uh, what is the data set name? What is the data set name is like per use case you have this data set. Um, what is the table name? That is the uh, where the raw events will be stored. What will be uh, the table name of that? Uh, now the main focus is indexes. That is um, what kind of uh, measures do you need? Like uh, for example, uh, you need a count of the records or you need a max on a currency int field. And what is the roll up? Like uh, we support day, minute, hourly, 
and uh, weekly uh, and the key version and the value version basically this is the uh, schema version of the uh, avro record in the uh, income of the incoming topic so you can also do like schema upgrades and change the versions and so on um the column fields actually uh, de uh, determines what will be the uh, uh, schema of your table uh, what will be the primary keys uh, all the details of the uh, schema of the table moving on uh, so this is a, an example of a fact table you can see that all the primary keys have been defined and you can see the types of the columns and the fields and the comment etc all these actually go into the column field in the data set like in the columns field in the data set uh then uh, and also you can think of a fact table as a collection of uh, raw events in a tabular format uh looking at the cube table it is just an aggregation so you can see that it has columns such as sum of uh, of a particular field like sum of bytes down link or max of currency ints uh count of records so um uh, ordered by all this primary key um moving on uh, so uh, why not we can just we could have just use a math package right math.min or math.max uh to calculate the min and max right coming to the calculation details so we we'll look at why uh why it will uh, result in uh, incorrect results so uh, consider a stream of events like this uh with incoming records which have id uh, one status undelivered value 2 and then we have another status undelivered with value 4 and then a status delivered with value 5 now when we want to calculate the max of value for the given status you can see that undelivered will be 4 when you just use the math uh, math package to calculate math dot max of uh, the values over the status uh then uh, you can see that it's easy and it it gives you correct results but uh there is a case where it will give you incorrect results this is like the best case scenario where we didn't have to do anything uh so for example the uh, logic would have been like if you have a record of type in you just uh, look at the new data you look at the existing data you do a comparison and based on that you do a min or max now why it will result in incorrect results is because you can only see uh, strictly increasing uh, when you do a max you'll only get strictly increasing uh, results in the uh, uh, actual max value uh, or strictly decreasing results when you do a min so that is what uh, we uh, do, we are trying to avoid because uh, when you do an update so this is what we do we, we handle updates as well so uh, for example suppose you have initially the uh one two three records with uh, this id one two three and with the original status undelivered undelivered delivered and then later on you uh, the undelivered status changes to delivered and its value changes to three so uh, in that case now the undelivered uh, max value should should have been two but actually when you use a ma ma math dot max package math dot max uh, function uh, you just get Four, which is incorrect. Uh, you actually want undelivered to be two and delivered to be five, which again, uh, as uh, the be uh, best case, we see that okay, it is uh, unaffected, so uh, uh, it, it's good for us. But um, so that's th that is the case that we are trying to handle that with updates. Uh, so how do we handle that? uh we actually use uh we came up with a logic to use a uh, heap uh, for example if we are doing a max calculation we will be using a min heap to store um, uh, all the values um, uh, the incoming values that we are seeing and we just do a collection dot max value on the heap for example let's look at the same example uh, uh, the update scenario uh, consider uh, only the first three steps that is when we get undelivered undelivered and delivered uh at that time uh if you can see on the left hand side uh left bottom um uh, that uh, uh the uh, for undelivered the uh, heap contains 2 and 4 and uh, you just do collections dot max on the heap so you get the correct value 4 and delivered uh, the correct value is 5 
and when when an update happens that is uh, we we do addition uh, we have adders and subtractors when an update happens so uh, first the value will be uh, removed that is uh, removed from um, uh the uh, uh aggregates so uh, when you do a remove of undelivered four the value will actually be removed from the heap and then uh, you get the max value by just doing a max of the uh, collect uh, of the heap so you get the correct value that is 2 for undelivered and the delivered still remains unchanged and the next step would be adding of the delivered 3 so the delivered will be added to the uh, delivered min heap uh, and then you get the correct value as 5 um uh, so uh, that uh, we have used uh, that logic um, some of the details uh, that i would like to go through is um uh, we always try to store for example the min heap will have uh, the it will try to always store the largest values when doing a max calculation so uh, you'll always get, get the um, ma um, um, max value uh, most of the times and um, uh when you are trying to replace like for example if the heap you the heap size is limited so when you are trying to replace an element in the heap we always do a comparison with the root only if it is uh, if the new element is greater than the heap then we do the insertion otherwise the new element is ignored so uh those were uh, some of the interesting details that went into the min and max calculations uh, uh so that's it i have for today uh let me know if you have any questions we really thank you for the conference uh, maybe if you have some question Hello, hi. This is Ankush. Um, I was curious about uh, the real-world use case where why is this data getting updated? Like first it was undelivered, then it switched to delivered, and do you have to then keep this history, the array min heap, min heap you were talking about for a long time? Can the data from one day ago, one week ago, or one month ago change? Because then that might mean you need to store a lot of history, probably. Right. right so uh, so uh, the uh, answering your uh, first uh, second question that is um, uh, how much data we need to store so we need to store only uh, and pick the roll up time so if you are doing a day aggregation then we just need to store it for the day and that will be handled by the rocks db state store provided by the stream sap itself um but and to give you an answer about where the array is stored we do store it in the avro record of the topic but we do not uh, display we do not store it in the actual table that is the cube table and uh, can, can you uh, repeat your first question yeah sorry the first question was why does the data change what what's happening because oh, okay. of which the data changes uh, so uh, for example um, uh, let me take a messaging use case like uh, you have uh, the sms messages so it has different states like uh, sometimes it is and uh, first it is undelivered then it will be maybe processing then it will be in delivered so in those cases there are basically updates to the same message message state uh, which are getting changed and i think updates are really common in a lot of scenarios as well like the same product may be having updates or like uh, especially state changes on um, a particular uh, uh, products of a process or items of a process so mainly that those use cases we have another question hello can you tell us a little Hi. bit about the scale of the ingest messages and how close to real time is the availability of those sure uh, so the scale is uh, i think we handle about uh, 20000 records per second we can ingest uh, more than that we have tested our, around so far and uh, uh, at a rate of um, uh, I, i mean the data is available to be queried um, 
in around uh, less than uh, two minutes, that's our SLA. But it's usually just a few seconds uh, that is usually available to be queried in real time. Hello. Um, have you considered uh, implementing this uh, logic using uh, Spark or Flink? And what was the trade-off, if so? So we do use Spark in our batch processing. Uh, if you have, uh, if you, uh, there was a batch pipeline. So that is uh, Spark based, and there the min and max are directly available. So. Uh, for, for the batch pipeline, we directly used uh, those, but we haven't tested uh, uh, Spark uh, in a real-time ingestion scenario. We haven't uh, done that uh, part. Thank you. Yeah. We still have three minutes if we have more questions. So what I understand from your explanation is that the uh, size of the buffer, the heap that you called it, is limited in size. What happens right. if you have more state changes than the size of your heap? Right, right. That is the edge case scenario. Like for example, when you we are doing the max calculation and we have all the max values uh, uh, or uh, monotonically increasing uh, values come in the stream um, and uh, up to the size of the heap. And um, so basically all the min elements are evicted from the heap. And uh, when that happens uh, and when updates happen to all these max elements in the heap, what happens is you will get an incorrect result. Uh, that's the edge case scenario. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, basically, it will either uh, give you uh, the current, uh, uh, whatever the rec the new records uh, uh, value as the max value in that case, which would be uh, not right. Is, is that a problem in your use case? Sorry? Uh, is that a problem in your use case, as in uh, does something break if it gives the wrong answer? Or is it just a dashboard that shows something incorrect to a business user? Yeah, it would be an incorrect. Uh, um, I would say it wouldn't be. I mean, it would be an incorrect, but it would be uh, also based on your heap size and your updates to the uh, uh, max values of your heap. Yeah, thank uh, you. In in case of max calculation, yeah. So it's like a really edge case scenario. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Maybe we have the time for one last question. So. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, question, uh, imagine if uh, now you need not only min and max, but some other aggregation function, how easy it would be to such extent. Thanks. Some? Oh, for example, average, sum, or whatever else. Uh, so we already have sum. Uh, we already support sum. Uh, uh, and uh, sum, sum would be uh, very uh, easy because we just do the uh, addition based on what we currently have, right? So that is what we do for sum. Uh, I, I, the question was, I would say, in general, not only some, but is it is it easy to do extend for any aggregation function, or are there any limitations for that? Oh, for any aggregation function, no. We have done this specifically for min and max. This is a very uh, yeah custom logic for min and max. We haven't uh, done it. Like I think other aggregations would need. Maybe similar, but uh, a little bit different logic. Thanks. Sure. 
So uh, thank you, Mina, Minekshi. Uh, we can maybe all thank you uh, together. Uh, so have a have a nice uh, day, everyone, and uh, and maybe we can applaud her. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone.